Welcome back to the shop. Here's our pike, beautiful 27 incher. This is like perfect eating size. Yeah, I think a lot of people are intimidated by pike. There's really only one extra step for flaying them. It is taking out the Y bones, but we're gonna start by slitting them down the middle and we're just slabbing them is, is I guess the term that I've heard before. I'll try to do my best to keep this accessible so you guys can see what's going on. I cut a lot of pike in my time guiding up north, but I don't claim to be any sort of expert. They do have an extra step. I'm gonna flip them here. We'll start this way. We are now gonna cut behind the gill plate down till you hit that spine. Now we're gonna run along the spine all the way to the tail. Shout out to my grandpa, Abe Taves, for teaching me how to cut pike, how to cut walleye. I will never be as good as him, but I will keep trying. As you can see, you get a lot of meat off of a 27 inch pike. Look at that, that's just, that's just one half of it. Isn't that beautiful? All right, we're gonna flip it over here. Look at, look what he's been eating. There's a minnow that looks like the tail of a, a Cisco maybe or something. Right now we're slitting down the other side. And I don't know, I think there will be one side when you cut fish that you will be better at. What I try to do now is not cut through the spine because if you cut through the spine, <laughs> it is tough to finish that fish off. All right, there's the other half. As you can see, I did, I did medium. I'd give that a, a, a six, seven out of 10. Maybe you could see there's a little more meat maybe in the back I could have kept, but overall pretty good. So a couple things that I'm gonna wanna trim. This belly meat I can trim, I can trim around that fin. I mean, you could eat some of that belly meat if you want, but let's start by taking out the ribs. That is the edge of the ribs right there. That's, that's the piece we're taking out. So we're trying to get the knife to go down and then to kind of scoop underneath it. You could just, cause if you cut straight down, you're gonna lose all that meat underneath the ribs. So we are gonna try. And less is more when you're doing this. So I'm trying to get underneath it. And then I'm just trying to run that knife right along this. And I know, I know guys, there's lots of people much better at cutting fish than me. I know pike can be intimidating and the best way to do it is just start, start doing it. So now I'm kind of curling my knife up and trying to get underneath the ribs. But you can see right there, I'm just getting underneath it. That's kind of where the ribs end. All right, the ribs are out. Now, as you can see, there's still fin and some belly meat. So I'm just gonna cut that out. All right, we are so close to done guys. This is the step that people have to learn. This is where it gets different from pike to walleye. So right, I'm gonna, I'm gonna hold it close to the camera here. See those little white spots right there? That's part of the Y bone. And that is the part that is the toughest to take out. So the Y bones go down and then kind of hook underneath. So I'm gonna cut on this side of the Y bone. I'm gonna cut down till it hits it. Then I'm gonna cut against them. And then I'm gonna cut on this side of the Y bone and I'm gonna cut down and then scoop underneath it. Kind of like the ribs. I'm starting at the top and I'm getting as close as I can to that Y bone and I'm just running it down. And you can hear it, listen to this. You hear that? That's the knife hitting the edge of the Y bone. So I'm gonna keep running it down. The Y bones go until pretty close to the tail section right there. And, and this is where you're gonna lose meat. This is gonna get difficult. Now I'm gonna turn the knife and I'm gonna run my knife kind of flat along it. So right now I made a little opening. You can almost, you can fold it open and you can see those Y bones. I can run my finger on them. So those are the Y bones that you're taking out. So this meat is all gonna get saved on top here. So now the next step is I'm going on the bottom edge of the Y bone there. I'm running down. All right, and now I'm gonna scoop underneath it and I'm gonna connect to that other cut right there. So now I'm gonna scoop underneath and I'm turning the knife up. See, I'm turning my wrist and I'm kind of just helping it along and trying to save as much meat as possible. So it's okay if you cut all the way. So right now at this point, you can see that flap right there that I have, that is the Y bone. That's, that's the part that scare people from eating pike and it's really not that scary. So the other thing you can do right now, if you did a really good job of cutting it, you might be able to cut it out or you can just cut down from the top where those two cuts connected. And now it will basically just pull out. Look at that. I might have to help it at the end there a little bit. Boom. So there you go. As you can see, just so you guys can see there, once it focuses, I kind of 
made a little flap on the top to get those bones out. Now it is boneless all the way through the tail section. You might find a couple depending on how far you go. So you're gonna wanna play it safe and go pretty close to the tail. But there you have a boneless pike filet. We are gonna skin it and we are gonna cube it because we are gonna make some sweet chili pike bites. One thing about pike meat is it's definitely a firmer meat. So it's better suited for a stir fry if you're doing these little bites, that sort of thing. It just holds together a little bit better. I like to grab that skin and just hold that knife flat and just kind of wiggle the skin back and forth. There you go. I'm, I'm actually <laughs> happy with, I'm, I'm happy with how that turned out. As you can see, I left, you know, a little bit of meat on there, but pretty good overall. Once again, always just take that second to feel, to feel the meat, you know, make sure you didn't leave any bones, feel the edge of the ribs right down here near the, the anal fin, there's a little bit of tougher meat. So we're just gonna cut that out. And that is, that's a good piece of meat. I don't think you ever need to keep a pike over, well, you can't even keep a pike over, I think it's 29 and a half inches in Ontario, but really like a 25 to 27 inch pike is pretty perfect. All right, we're gonna cut this other one and we're gonna head to the kitchen. Not perfect, but boneless.